just to demonstrate what I will be showing you. So let let's me just run this. This is a horse walking with a carriage uh, wheel rotating. All right. So that will be one part of the tutorial that I'm doing today. Another part of the tutorial that I will do will be to just run through quickly how you can set up a uh, uh, multicolor horses and multicolor carriages. Uh, for this tutorial, uh, I will start with assuming you have received a uh, similar kind of an asset uh, of a carriage and a horse. Uh, often, when you receive a, a free asset or, or even a purchase asset that is of a low cost, you you get it in one big mesh, right? One one object together everything together so bef before we can uh, enhance on coloring and animation it's best that you try to uh, separate out the meshes to things that you want to animate now in this tutorial I want to animate the horse walking I also want to animate the wheel turning uh, as it been pulled by the horse right so what I need this mesh to do is that it should be be at least having each of the wheels separated out from the mesh as well as a horse. Um, so let's see how I normally do it. Uh, now I have this object on the right hand side of the outline editor. You can see it, it is called Horse and Carriage version 1. Uh, so how am I going to break it up? Uh, the, I think I have explained in past tutorial, but let me just go through this step by step if, if you are, can bear with me on that. Um, first, you do a tab, right? Go into all in the edit mode. Press A to select all the all the uh, vertices of the mesh. Then you do a separation. Uh, normally, the first thing I do is I will separate by material. And then do a quick look, see how is this uh, mesh particularly uh, separated out. If I were to just navigate around it, there's a horse. Okay, sorry, there's a horse. And I know there's a tail. So the tail and the horse to me is the, is one object. So I might as well put them together. When, when I animate it, I put it as one single object. So I just do a control J by selecting the tail and the body together and press horse. So this is a horse. I'm going to name it in the outline and call this the horse. All right. Um, I will create a collection under tutorial demo and call it the horse. I'll be putting something there later on. That's why I want a collection to group it. So I have the horse and I can just move it in and by dragging it up, or I can just do a move, capital M, horse demo, horse, right? So you can see that the object horse have gone into the horse collection. Uh, as for the carriage, it is still one object. Uh, so it seems like it is one material. And I think you can do a quick look into the uh, material property and that you can notice that there's only one carriage blue material setup but in order for me to animate the wheel I need to separate out this into the wheel so typically uh, again how I do it is that I do a tab select all mesh separate by loose part and then tab to go back to object mode again so what I want to do now is to get get the the wheels. Uh, I noticed that the wheels and it has spokes are separated out. To to make sure that I can do a easy selection, uh, it's best to uh, uh, hide all the objects and environment not related to the carriage, including the horse. Uh, I think you can hide the horse. So horse, which is already here. You can just do a undisplay part. Uh, in this case, uh, the building happened to be in the assets collection I know of, so I just switch it off. So all the buildings are gone. As for the ground, uh, ground in this case I put it into the scene collection, 
and and uh, when I click on the ground, I, I could go into the outline and press a period to get straight into the ground and then hide the ground. So now I think I have a neater environment where I have just the carriage, right, with the horse, uh, what I call this, whatever. I, I don't need to separate it out, but it is already separated. So now I want to have the view. So to make it fast, I will only create the view. So what I will do is that I select it in this manner, select the outer rim, and then select all the object using shift, drag, key. Now in this kind of selection, uh, make sure that you don't have this uh, x-ray on because otherwise you will select parts behind the view accidentally which you do not want so you just want to have uh, the spokes and the outer rim to be the view so this is all selected and you can come press J and this is a view all right and you go to outline press period rename this one as view back and I think it's on the uh, left side of, of the front all right so I got one view done. So I can do quickly on the reviews. All right, I'm going to run through this very fast. Uh, basically, just select the spot. Back. Ah, I joined the two view at the back accidentally. Never mind. I will break it out later on. So now that. I have the four views selected uh, separately. I will join the rest and put it as a carriage, right? Because I don't need to animate that part of the object. So select all, always select one more object last with the shift key and then control J. And now I have the carriage. And, uh, I think it will be good to also create a collection of it. Did I press that? Yeah. I don't want that. I uh, just want it to be inside the tutorial demo so to be more organized. Call release the carriage. I'm going to move all the carriage parts into the carriage collection. All right. Um, earlier on, I made a mistake. I mean, uh, 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 combining the f this two view into into one object called the front left. So I have to break it out. So what I do is I'll just hide the rest. I do not need to. I have this selected, right? Uh, uh, press a tab key. Just select the front view. Mesh. Separate by selection. So this way now you have two different view, right? Uh, just to make sure that it is oops there's something that is behind this view that I have not selected so what happened was because I switched off the x-ray I did select uh, objects behind the front part so what I'll do is I'll do the same thing again select this view tap select the other parts that I miss out Okay, now, now we, we have the four wheels uh, and the horse separated out from the carriage. Uh, we can uh, try to animate the wheel first. So to animate the wheel, uh, one easy way is to have one controller uh, to control all the four wheels turning at the same time. Uh, strictly speaking, the wheels in the front should be moving faster because it's slightly smaller than the back but I think for the purpose of this uh, demonstration we will just use one controller instead of two uh, and make them go at the same speed I think that should be okay for simple animation now uh, how I'm gonna do it is that I will first select the carriage uh, and make sure that 
the, uh, the origin is at the center of the carriage. Uh, you can see the little dot is the center of the carriage. I'm going to put the position, sorry, I'm going to put the empty at that position. So I'm going to create a, a sphere empty. You can see there's a sphere empty here. And this sphere uh, will be the controller. So I will first set up the first view using the child of controller and point it to the empty. This empty, uh, which I think is uh, maybe we'll name it uh, in the outline to be called rotate dot control. And, and this view that we wanted it, the control is only rotation. And we only want it to rotate along the Y axis in this case. Uh, if I were to move the MT and do a R, oops, it's not rotating the way I want it. Let me see what's happening. Uh, the origin of the view have to be all at the center uh, and not somewhere in the center of carriage, but center of its own uh, geometry. So let me select all the four view and make sure that they all have its own origin. Okay, can you now see the dot there? Before? Each of the view have its own dot at the center of its own geometry. I think that's why it didn't turn the way it should be turning. It should be turning on its own uh, origin, right? So let me try again. Uh, if I were to select the empty and do a rotation, yes, it works. Uh, it, it's wobbly because it's also moving x, y direction and I just simply move the, the thing. So to, to make sure that I, I don't get a wobbly view, I, I disable the x and z direction and try again. Okay, it, it should rotate pretty well. So that that's, is one view that I have made uh, with a child of constraint to the controller. So to speed up, I will do the same for the other three view, but we will copy the, okay, I should be control C. All right, copy selected constraint. And it's a child of that I should select. And okay. Now, if I select the other views, uh, they all have the constraint on the right-hand side, child off. If I were to go back to select the controller empty and then do a R and rotate, okay, you can see now all the four views are rotating. So essentially, all the four views all have the same constraint of child off and pointing to the empty controller to have this rotation done. Okay, um, so we have done with the carriage, so I'm going to have simply hide it off and switch on the horse that we had. So this is the horse. So how are we going to animate a horse? Uh, we're going to use the standard Blender option called the Regify for this purpose. So with that said, um, make sure that you have uh, Regify uh, enabled. Go to Edit, Preference, uh, Site. RIG, RG5. So this option you can see has to be enabled. All right. So just enable it. Then you will have the option to regify it later on. So just get that ready. Okay. Next thing to do is that uh, Blender comes with uh, armature, a bone set for animals. So Typically, uh, before I do that, I just want to make sure that we have the origin in a place that later on easier to manipulate. Uh, if I select the horse, the origin is at the back. Remember, this is the center of the carriage, but uh, we want the horse to have its own origin uh, and preferably at the bottom of the horse leg. So easy to position the horse, right? So what I'm, I'm going to do is that I selected the horse. I go into option, select origin, and move the origin to the to the bottom of the shoe. Now, one way is that I turn the, the, sh the horse upside down and then do a shift, right click to the center of one of the horse leg. All right, uh, I'll, I will 
with that done all I have to do is to do a shift S selection because uh, you see now the origin have automatically moved to the back bottom of the horse so that's where I well, would like to position it uh, so remember to switch off the origin in the option because this means that only the origin will be uh, transform or move around the rest of the thing doesn't move so switch, switch it off so that I can still move the body around okay with that done um, I will now add in uh, armature mm. uh, to add in armature you have to just add armature and animals and they have a couple of animals provided by blender bird cat horse shark both I will use the horse in this case Before I continue, I just remember that I, I find that when using Regify, it's better to put your object uh, at the world origin uh, to have a better control of animation or rigging, we call it. So I will now move both object, I mean the bone and the horse into the world origin, all right? Before I do that, I have to remember this position so that I can come back here where I was. So to do that, I select the horse. I already have my cursor at the uh, selected position. And then I would simply add a marker. Uh, you just put a cube there maybe, yeah. This is my marker. Marker of the horse. All right. Um, later on I can uh, move it back here after I go to the world origin so with that as my marker to remember which I will move it up into the horse collection now let me focus back into the horse animation part I got the armature horse and the horse body I selected I will shift S and selection to hold on to world origin first and then selection to that so then what I do is I press a uh, numpad period okay you can now see that the horse and the armature is at the world origin that can have a more visible uh, you know on the X and Y axis in green is the Y and X it's a red color uh, as this. Um, the armature and the horse have a different uh, origin positions. That's why when we bring to the world origin, they are not aligned. That was, that was aligned earlier on. So no, no worries. We can select the armature and try to align it. Uh, Shift G X. Now in in when we try to do rigging, uh, always people will tell you that the armature you want to be able to see easily. So you have to go select the armature, go into the object property and, and put it in front, viewport display in front, so that you can always see the armature. The, the general purpose of uh, trying to rig a horse uh, is or rig anything for that matter is to make sure that all the bones in these armatures are in the center of the mesh that you want to to uh, so-called bind it together to, to animate right so at the moment this is how the horse armature is compared to this particular horse so you need to adjust these uh, bones to to be quite aligned to this mesh horse mesh so what I will see is that uh, first thing I want to suggest is that let's go into edit mode after selecting amateur and then remove those parts that are not required 
in our animation because we don't need to animate the hair, right? For example, so I just remove the hair part. Uh, this was the one here. Yeah, these are the parts that is dealing with the hair. So having selected the hair bones, I will just delete them. All right, I don't need them. Okay, to position nicely, always press one so that you have this uh, autographic view. Nice. Okay, you have a better uh, view exactly where the bones in relationship to the uh, body. So with this said, uh, I will start with the front leg, back leg, tail, and then the, the head part, all right? So let's start with the front, front. I think this part, at this end, you can notice it's not really the center of the mesh. So I probably want to do a little bit of turning Ah, forgot something. Remember, there's always choose a, a set of bones for the legs. So it's left and right. So I press one again. Uh, press N. S assist. Okay, got it. You have, have to be in edit mode, and then press N to get into this menu, and then select a two. And you, you see there's an option called X assist mirror. Enable this. By doing this, when you move the bone on one side, the other side will also move exactly the same manner. All right. So I press one again to have the autographic view with the X assist now already enabled. I can start moving my bone. Right as I said for earlier on with time with the front leg, uh, I find that this part is not at the center of the mesh, so I just adjust it a little bit to the center of the front leg for this part. Uh, danger point. When you do that, uh, you are breaking away from the what you call a spine bone to the neck bone. So later on, we have to figure a way to 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 uh, fix it back. But anyway, let's try to visually fix it in this manner first. I will fix this part later on. Let let me fix the back first. Now create what I call a Regify Spoon Set instead of the Armature because Regify it has some function that allow you to to animate easier. I think we will have some error, but let, let, let's try going to Object Mode by pressing Tab with the Armature selected. Go into this um, object data, you will have this uh, button called generate rig. This is because of the fact that we enabled Regify, it has this button. So if everything works fine, if I click that, it should work, all right? But I suspect you have an error, NAC001 not connected, all right? Okay, so that's a mistake on the NAC001. So what do you mean by NAC001? If I think it's this one here, is it? Select the armature, go into post mode. Select the bone on the top, it will have a name at the bone. No, nope, that's next 04. If I click this one, you see it's 3, 2, and 1. So something wrong with this next 001, it says. Uh, so what the problem is, uh, from my experience, is normally the connection is not done correctly. Uh, so the connection could be the bone before it, which is, a, I think is a spine. Yes, it's a spine. It should be connected to this guy, but if I look in, it looks like they are not aligned exactly. So what I should do is that, um, I think what I would have to do is to go to edit mode, select the, the top part, Shift S cursor to select it and then go to the other
the other neck 0, 0, 001 and snap it at that position. Okay, now I think both bones are exactly connected in the right position. Okay, I think that should solve the problem. So this is a very typical problem for the horse rigging in my experience. So, so with that said, let's try to rectify one more time. So generate the rig, all right, with this uh, bone alignment done and generate. Oops, it works. Once that works, so where is the where's the rig? Rig is here actually according to here. So I can see it. Ah, it's at a different place. Ah this G5 is created at this original position of the horse and not at the front. Uh, I think I know why. I think I created the armature at this place and not at the world origin. So I'm going to delete this rig because I do not want that. I select the metal rig or rather the armature that I created early on. I do a control A and transform all position here because now I want I want the system to remember that this armature have moved to the new position and that I apply it to be permanently at this position. So if I were to do the regify again, yes, it works. Yeah. Okay. That there's. Uh, again, one of those little mystery that happens when you are not familiar with uh, using Regify or even Blender in general. A lot of time problems are because of the fact that you have transformed your object, meaning you have moved it and and scale it, whatever, and then you try to apply some uh, function on it. But in this case, the Regify function, it will not work. All right. So always remember that before you apply anything, even modify it sometimes, you have to always apply. I repeat again, apply here means that you selected the bone, you put control A and do all transformation. Now, not always you do all transformation. Sometimes, sometimes you just do the rotation change. So you apply rotation, sometimes location, sometimes scale, right? Uh, so anyway, uh, we solved the problem here. In this case, the horse, uh, we have the problem was because the the uh, the armature we have transformed from one position to another position. We forgot to apply it permanently, so the regify cannot be found. Good. So uh, now the regify rig is here. The rigs. Uh, let, let's see if it's working perfectly. Uh, we will attach the body to the rig all right this is how you do it you select the body you select the rig and then you do a, a control p and select with automatic weights what this does is that it will automatically have the mesh attached to the rig in the appropriate place so to confirm that it's really done correctly one quick way is going to post mode select one of the rig part let's say i select uh, the root which is the big box here this is a root it's supposed to move the body of the horse and if i press g and then do a uh, movement okay that shows that it, it seems to be working if i want to make the front bowing r okay so that part is working and similarly the horse oh, sorry that's not the, uh, the the this is a toss of the move the back the, the root is here actually this moved the whole horse all right okay oh by the way this uh, armature the bone set uh, we are not using it to animate so it was using it to create the the the, the rig from regify for easier animation so I'm going to temporarily hide hide the the meta rig all right which is no longer required what is 
now require is just the rigify rig instead of the armature. All right. Okay. Uh, with that said, we have most of the thing kind of set up, but how and what I'll be animating. So basically, we're trying to make the horse walk, right? So the quickest way to do it, instead of try and error, you can go to Google site to look for uh, a movement cycle picture to see how horse walk, right? So I have one. Uh, I, let me go back into object mode. I'm going to add in uh, a reference of a walk cycle of a horse that I have recreated. This is the one that I downloaded from Google site. Uh, and S10. Okay. When you add the reference, it, it always start from where the cursor was. So, so now we have this little horse reference diagram. Just to rotate it a little bit. Press one. Oh, I shouldn't dump that. Yeah. G X and G Z to move it up a little bit. So here is a walk cycle. That's how a horse walk according to you know people who does uh, motion. So our job is to animate it by doing a pose. There are eight poses for a simple walk cycle, they call it. Uh, so how do we do that? Uh, it, this is a bit boring part, uh, but I will just quickly run it through and, and, and do one or two of the poses. And then uh, as the rest, I think you can do it on your own. But anyway, I'll try to do all. Uh, just bear with me. Um, I was in object mode early on, right? I selected the armature. I select the pose. I have the end item open up on item. And uh, um, it's best that I will switch off those part of the bones that I won't be using in my animation. It doesn't have to be precise. So basically, I just need to animate the front leg on IK mode on left and right and then the back leg left and right and the tail which is the far here I can you know move the tail a little bit uh, but if you look at the walk cycle it doesn't show anything about the tail but I think we'll do a little bit of it anyway okay so this is should be sufficient for most part of the animation of a horse cycle so First, we start with frame zero, and we will insert a key. Oh, all right. We select all those uh, rigs, bones, and insert all location and rotation. All right. So that's the first frame at rest position, standing position. All right. So I would recommend nine frames for each pose. So the next one is uh, nine frame by moving the right arrow at the timeline. Now we will do the first pose. Uh, the first pose is on the left leg. I think it you have to just rotate uh, before I do that. Okay, so let rotate. We normally want to rotate along the Y axis in this case. Just lock, lock this two part and then just that way you won't mess it up to rotate upwards a little bit. Okay, that looks a bit like what shown in the picture. I think it have a bit of lift up. Okay, what did I press? Uh, sorry. Let me G Z. That's what I want to do. Lift the leg a little bit up. Okay, that is the f right uh, left right leg left leg doesn't seem to be moving so then on the back I will try on the left foot foot left foot is behind according to the diagram G X a little bit
Okay, that seems to be the first post. Once we're happy with that, uh, that's first post. Select all insert location rotation. So now let's do the second one on uh, frame 18. Okay, so um, to speed up, I will just now demonstrate to go back to the rig that I have done earlier on uh, that have done all the eight frames. So select so that's the action by the name is called rig stand to walk action. It means it's in a standing position and then it goes through the walk pose, all right, as i showing here by dragging the the header of the player all right so from stand you start to walk however if we want it to be walking unlimited uh, you know for long distance and all that this obviously have to be repeated from frame one to frame eight but the current action start from a is a standing position to a walking position. So to do cyclic, what we need is just the first pose, which is in frame nine, to pose eight, which is uh, on frame 81, all right? It's nine frame for each pose. So uh, what I did was that I essentially just select all this, uh, all this uh, keyframe. Um, just move forward, make sure that I'm selecting all of them, but I will not require the standing, uh, what kind of, the standing keyframe by control box it out. So what I want is only this set of keyframe, right? Uh, I should start, I will create another action that is only cyclic walking without not from stand to walk, but just walk and walk. So I can just GX D to frame one. And the, the, the frame zero that previously we have, I do not want it, delete them. Copy this one and, and name it. Uh, instead of stand to walk, this time is walk, walk to walk, all right? Call it walk to walk, walk to walk action. All right. So with this, we are now ready to uh, allow animation for long, uh, for unlimited length of walking. To do that, uh, we will go into animation uh, workspace. And I have a NLM editor here, non-linear animation editor setup. Right. Now I switch it on. So, okay, these are my previous environment. So maybe what, what I should do is I, I don't need them. So I can remove them. This one, this was done previously. Just to give it tidy, I will remove this one. Delete tracks. So I have now a walk to walk action and early on I have a stand the walk action which i should use this as the beginning so this stand the walk action i have is in my stash and i want to put it into my animation uh, linear editor uh, so by doing it i have to push this action into my tracks so when i do that you can see that i have a yellow strip we call it of showing video so if i would to go back to the beginning and then do a play you see that the horse is walking right based on this strip and it stopped because there's nothing else to tell it what to do after that this is the 80 uh should be 82 frame stand to walk so 
in order for me to have a repeated walking, um, I should now uh, select the other action that I have early on duplicated. Uh, we call it walk to walk, right? I think, yeah, this one. So it have a stash here. Rig walk to walk. I will push it down to my 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 track of animation. So now I have a stand to walk and a walk to walk. The one that I will need to do cyclic will be the walk to walk. So I I select that strip and move it to the right and drag it somewhere here, All right? Somewhere around here. So this will be a continuation of walk to walk. And then you can see that it is now continuing to walk and stop where there's no more uh, strip of animation available. So, so stand in from stand to walk. So let's start with that stand, stand to walk. Then we have a walk to walk. For walk to walk, because it's cyclic, uh, I can go into uh, what they call the edi editor within the LL uh, nonlinear uh, animation edit editor. Press N, and then there is three menu here. I just select strip, and for the last uh, second strip, I can make it repeatedly run, and, and there's a word repeat here under action clip. Let's say I want it to run five more times, the same thing over and over again. So I press five and you can see the strip is extended. I uh, I scroll my mouse uh, backward to so that I have a zoom out view of all the, all the entire frame from zero to about 400. I, I, I do a 300 animation frame anyway, so that's more than enough. So let me start again. Uh, I will now be walking in on stand the wall and then continue all right so you can see now this horse will be walking for uh, for this eight frames uh, one time at the beginning and then five times with the repeated cyclic walk so this is a six six repeated uh, cyclic walk step overall and it stopped at about frame 432. Okay, so this is how you can uh, have two action join up in NLM and create a continuous uh, animation of a walk cycle. I want the horse to go back to where I was with the carriage. So you remember we have a marker uh, so we have a marker for horse position. I select that, shift S, cursor to that selected position. And then I select the rig. Remember, I have to select the rig, right? Not the horse, because the rig is a parent. The horse uh, is the body, uh, which is the horse body in this case, which is a mesh. So if I move the rig, the body will follow. Um, I think this reference, okay, anyway, we'll, we'll move the rig back to where we will. All right, so shift, selection to cursor. I just move it to the original position. If I press numpad period, because I've selected the rig, I would now be able to see the, the horse. Um, okay, unfortunately, the, uh, the reference diagram is on the other side. It's okay, I, I don't really need it anymore because I've done the animation. I can just close it up. So if I were to do a play again, I have the view of the carriage that we done earlier on, rotating, we have the horse moving. Now how can we make, make the horse and the carriage go forward? Uh, typically, uh, one easy way is we will have a uh, empty, to parent all these objects and animate that empty to go forward. All right. I select the carriage. It has a origin at the center of the carriage. 
I, I put an option of origin. Basically, I want to shift the origin G. Uh, X, I think, yeah, going forward. So I just want to put the empty somewhere here at the beginning of the horse, all right? By dragging it, disable the origin, and then position my cursor at this particular origin, and then uh, add a new empty. This will be the empty that will guide the movement of the horse and the carriage, all right? So again, I put a sphere here. Uh, I name it horse carriage. Animation, right? Maybe you want to put animation if you want. Yeah, doesn't matter. So now this is the one that we want it to move forward. Uh, I will parent all the relevant objects, the horse, the carriage and the four views to this uh, particular empty, all right? So, so I, I, I mean, I could have just go to the outline and do the selection. So first I select four views, the horse belt, in this case, separated, the carriage body. Uh, you don't need to select this uh, particular, hold on, let me try again, yeah. And then the horse, all right, I want them all to be parented to this new uh, MT, which will be selected last. Control P, keep transform. All right, so now this MT, if you go into carriage, you can see that all this now become a parent, children of this uh, MT. And if I drag, you press G and move it, everything follows except the uh, rig. Uh, so I have a mistake. I shouldn't be parenting the horse to the to the empty. I should be parenting the rig because the rig is a parent of the horse. So let me unparent the horse. I made quite a lot of mistakes today in the tutorial. So clear and keep transformation. I should be parenting the rig to the, to the thing. But when I parent the rig, I should parent the root of the rig, right? So, so if I go into post mode, uh, okay. Um, so earlier on, my mistake was that I I parent the horse body. Uh, oops, sorry. Uh, let me go back to object mode. I parent the horse body to the uh, the empty that's supposed to guide everything G but I unparented unparented the horse by alternate P what I should be doing is that I should select the rig go into post mode select the root this is the root the big four arrow direction because the, the root if I press G you can see that it, it controls the whole horse so I should be selecting the this uh, new MT and then do a control P and parent to it. Uh, to animate it, uh, working at 300 frame, I mean 300 frames, I think roughly we can position it about 300 meters away and see how it goes. So with that said, I will normally start with frame one, insert Okay, and press N first. We are going X direction, I think. Okay. So we will insert a single frame for X. And should be 12 square away, right? So G, X. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Hmm. I didn't position my this thing, my this uh, frame to the right position before I do that. So let me go back to where I was in terms of the horse. I was trying to from one 
2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Uh, okay, now, now I'm at the right position and I will re replace the single keyframe. So I think it should be a lot better. Okay, so now we have a pretty realistic uh, walking scene of a carriage and a horse. So we we can then uh, use this uh, animation as part of the setup of the Western town that I will be showing. Now the other thing I wanted to share with you is how you can then use the horse uh, and change the color of the horses so that you can use the same rig so they have many horse walking if you want. So let's let's create a, a, a new a new collection of carriages dupe call it dupe horse carriages oh let's do the horses first dupe horses so i can duplicate the horse uh the the i i just want to duplicate the the horse right And the body. I can select all that. Shift D. Oh, I can't do that because I was in post mode. I have to be in object mode to do that. Shift D. Uh, left arrow key to confirm that you have duplicated it, and then move it to the uh, the duplicated horse. G Y to move it to the side. Yep. Now if I play it, okay. Now I have another horse walking on its own, but it's in the same direction because it's still parented to this same uh, empty that's leading the direction. It's okay, just for demonstration, you can do that, or we can create a new one so if you wanted to, a, a, a new empty to guide this horse instead of. Uh, that horse. My my intention is to show you that you can change the color of the horse, uh, which I have already set up in this case. Uh, a couple of them. We have this horse in color in the color mode, and I want to look at the current material of the horse. So I selected the horse and look at all the uh, material setup. So there seems to be two material, and I, I believe the big material uh, is the one that determines the color of the the main horse, while the other one is for the tail and other part of the horse. So let's try that. Okay, uh, click on to the horse rig, which is an image notes. Open up. Uh, click on this button to have a view. What I did was that I, I used the original, uh, this is the original uh, image provided by the whoever you know, I got free from. So what I did was that I changed the color of the horse skin to other color, uh, white, you know, a bit of greenish, a bit of light brown and reddish. Whatever, uh, you can change any color you want. I will show you how you change color of the skin. But let's say I I want to use, I want to convert it into a white horse. Oops, I can't do that. Why? Because I'm using the same same uh, material. So let's say I duplicate the, the material and call it white. And then I select the white material. Now I will have a white horse, right? Obviously, the eye, okay, the eye still looks good in terms of this uh, setup. And you can keep changing the color. I mean, you can have one uh, light horse, right? Much like what I already uh, wanted to show you earlier on, that I I have already done a couple of them, uh, you know, different kind of color horses. You can also do it for the carriage, obviously. Uh, so, so if you do a run in this guy, I only done this new one. Um, that was the original one. 
So what I have done in this tutorial is I limited the horse and the carriage and in this uh, I duplicated the horse to change the color and then the horse walking in the same direction because it's still parented to the same empty that is going forward. All right. Uh, you could create a different empty for a different direction, which I will show in the in the next tutorial when I show you how to set up in a, in a, the, the, the old west town uh, where I have different type of horses. Uh, in fact, I can show you roughly what, what I'm trying to do next tutorial. But but in that tutorial, I have a, I have some characters set up. Uh, I just wanted to share with you some of my characters. Uh, not all the characters, but uh, it, maybe just the cowgirl and the, the cowboy. All right, just these two. So the cowboy, I think, if looking at the cowboy, I, I select the cowboy. I press numpad zero. Okay. Oh, I it has a horse. Okay, that's a horse. All right, and uh, the cowgirl. There's a cowgirl, I think. Yeah. So, so in in the next tutorial, I using the same rig and animation, I I can put some characters on the horse and it move. All right. All right. Okay, let's start again. Go to the beginning. You can see this is something that I will show you how I, I do it in the next tutorial. But otherwise, uh, if you go back to where I am, uh, switch off the character set so that things move faster. When you have too many animation going on in the computer, everything will go slow. So by switching off those that you do not want to see in your setup, uh, it, it still looks pretty good by in terms of speed, right? Okay, now how do I change the color of of the of the horses, or rather the the, the big material? Um, it well, it's not easy to do it on a blender. I, I use a, a, a tool called called a gym. Uh, uh, you know, in gym you can uh, it, it's it, it's a lot easier to to create. Uh, a horse. Uh, so I want to open up one of the file. Uh, I just want to show you that you know all you have to do in gym is basically uh, if if you have uh, material you open up in gym. Gym is a free software anyway. Uh, you you can duplicate that layer. Just go to right click duplicate a layer. Right. So this is a new uh, layer that I want to play on. The key tool to use is that in Gym there's a thing called color map rotate color. So what rotate color does is that it allows you to change a range of color because when you change color, it's not just one color, right? Uh, it's usually a shades of color, which is like dark brown and a medium light and light brown and so on. So normally what you do is you select a range of color close to what you want and this is the source that of color you want to change this is the destination where you want to change it into all right you already see that I've changed a little bit of coloring I can make it more red by just moving the destination and the source by man manipulating these two set of ranges of a set of color that convert to another set of color you can create quite a nice effect all right uh, reddish, publish, and so on. There's also a set of blending option that you can play with. Uh, you know, if you click on a blending, you can do things like you know screen effect blending, right? Blending the color, so you create a different set of color. So compare, you can compare to the previous, the original. This is a new color. I have done. One red, I done one light brown, I done one little bit greenish, and one white. So, so this is just a quick trick that you can do uh, when you have, you know, to animate one particular object and you want to change the color of, of the big map that is uh, typically provided in in many of the free assets you can download from Google. 
this will be the trick you can do with color changes to, so that you can have many repeated items. So, so there you go. Uh, this is how you can create uh, multi-color horses and carriages. Uh, oh, the carriages is a little bit different. I think. Uh, I mean, let me walk through quickly. It, it, it's more the note setup, right? Is in this particular case, uh, if you look at the tutorial file, the, the trick of how I change the color. Uh, in this case, the, the the inner part of the carriage, blue. Uh, you can see that's just one color again you can change here you can change it to red you can see the color red or change it to green or change it to yellow I uh, mean bearish pinkish light bluish and so on so this is a very quick way by using this note setup you can change the inner part of the the color but if you want because of the way the original uh, materials provided and, and, and without doing too much work uh, if you want to change the the outer rim into black color like this one here uh, all I did was just add in uh, a color ram and a color burn and and that the color setting of the color burn and the RGB gov that come with the original material should be closely matched and then you can change the the the, the 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 rim to black, for example, using the color red. All right. All right. So my, I'm not a specialist in in notes, but in terms of simple setup, coloring, and all that, I can do quite a bit. But otherwise, uh, these are the little tricks that you can consider uh, for setting up your your assets before you build the scene that I will show in the next tutorial. Well, thank you for watching. Bye-bye. Hope you enjoy the video. Thank you for watching.